Marcella Norman is a master's level clinical psychotherapist who is committed to working with and for the African American community. Her children's book, Mental Health, What's That?, increases children's knowledge of mental health by helping them understand the importance of mental health and the connections between their mind, body, and world around them. Super excited to be joined here by Marcella Norman. Um, this is a, this is an exciting interview for me because I just I really admire the work you're doing. Um, as someone who, you know, really understands the value of mental health and has dealt with mental health struggles, I just like, I really admire you and, and your work. So I just wanted to say thank you for being here. It's, it's, it's super exciting. And it's also nice to talk to a, a local Philadelphia resident. So um, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to start just by, you know, kind of giving you the floor to share the work you're doing today, you know, what your priorities are and a little bit of background about yourself and, you know, the work that you're doing. Okay. So I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. I currently work in the city. I am a psychotherapist, but my main employment right now is um, I'm in substance abuse. So I work as a drug and alcohol therapist at a methadone clinic. I'm also a psych tech at Penn. Um, and I also do individual therapy for uh, another mental health um, company, which is very large in Philadelphia. So I treat children and adults there. So I'm pretty much spread out <laughs> all over um, this discipline. I've been in the mental health field for about 10 years now. And um, I really, it's like a passion of mine. So it's not like work. I know right. a lot of people like, you have all these like really a serious job. <laughs> like, how do you do it? But um, it's not like work for me because I it's my passion. So what like inspired you to take it, like to take this path? Like what, what led you to follow your passion and like how did this kind of all form for you? It actually started in my adolescence. So I was like a really troubled child. And at that time, when I was growing up, it wasn't a lot of information or education around mental health. So my parents really didn't know like what to do with me. And I kind of like had this really big anger for the world. And it was just very difficult navigating like adolescence. So probably like, um, I had to be like my early twenties, like adulthood. And I finally like saw out therapy for myself and when I first went it was like an older lady an older white lady and I felt like at that time I was like um you don't know what I'm going through like you can't um even imagine like my life and she really said something that was really profound to me and like kind of like changed the whole trajectory of like my life she said I may not be where you're from, or I might not look like you, but um, pain is universal. And I understand that you're hurting. And that yeah. kind of like opened up the floodgates. And I only had like a few sessions with her. It was like outpatient, but it really like just let me release everything that I've been holding and it changed my life. And I'm like, I want to do this. I want to be a mental health therapist because it literally changed my life. So that's how I like got started. I started um, undergrad and I was a psychology major. So it just went on from there. That's that's such a an amazing story. And, you know, I I think that as we continue to normalize mental health, like the world just will continue getting better because you know, one thing that I've realized in, throughout my life is like, you could be physically as healthy as anyone, but if your mental health isn't right, you're not healthy. And it's, um, it's just looking at health in its entirety is something that I, you know, it's still, we're still learning how to do it like collectively. And it's awesome mm -hmm. that like, you're doing the work to do that. And, you know, what is it like today? Would you say for like, the youth, like, it's, I feel like the pandemic has been difficult. I mean, I know that, you know, you, you work in a lot of different areas, but 
we'll get to your children's book in a minute, but you know, what, what do you think the world is like for kids growing up today? Is it, do you think things are getting a little bit better, a little bit more, um, you know, compared to the last 10, 20, 30 years? I, like, have you seen progress at least in the community? So in regards to progress, like since post pandemic, I feel like the progress is that mental health awareness is more mm -hmm. high. It's highlighted more than ever before. You see even athletes now really prioritizing their mental health in the media. And that's a big deal, especially for our youth to see that. So I feel like um, we have progressed um, less stigmatized mental health. Like we are really promoting it. So I think that's like our progression. However, I feel like our adolescents are really struggling right now, especially, you know, since the pandemic, post pandemic and, and their generation of everything being, you know, online, not in person, it's like really isolating um, our youth. So it's kind of harder for them to connect and connection is a big, big part of, um, you know, keeping our mental health healthy and, having just, you know, support and resources. So I think that, you know, could be a little bit better. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, one thing that you is such an obstacle in my mind is just accessibility. You know, like when I think about getting access to therapy, if, if someone has insurance, it's hard to even get insured for like, get to, to get your insurance to cover therapy. So for so many people, it's so difficult to even find care. And like, that's why, you know, having free resources and resources available is so important, especially at a young age. And, um, you know, they're just, to me, like who I, I don't work in the mental health field, obviously I work here, but it's just so frustrating to see how many obstacles there are for, for people of all ages, especially kids. It's, and it, it just like, frankly, could be really expensive to get help. Um, and that's, that's, to me, it's frustrating. Yeah, finances is one of the big barriers that um, keep people from accessing mental health. Like you said, the insurance, the whole insurance process is just like really hard to navigate for most people. Mm -hmm. And um, even like just calling the back of your card can be like a whole project. So it's like really hard um, financially for people to access mental health and if you go the private route then you're paying more like a hundred to two hundred dollars a session you know so it's pretty expensive and it's kind of unfortunate um other barriers i see is just like the lack of clinicians that we have right now mm -hmm. i know the I work for we have a wait list that is astronomical you know people just waiting to get a clinician because we're such um you know a shortage just like every other profession has shortages the mental health field is like really struggling right now with the yeah. lack of patients. so that's a big um barrier to access as well and then we have um in my community and a lot of communities, racial barriers, where it's like representation, we have a lack of representation. Most clients want to come into a space. Like I said, my story, you know, I told you my story, like I wanted to be felt and seen and heard and understood. And a lot of clients feel that way. Like they want someone, not only that represents them, but can culturally understand them. So that's a big barrier too, as far as like language and cultural norms, like people want to come into a space where they feel safe. So, um, People of color and um, African American clinicians are a very small percentage in the American Psychological like Association. Um, they have like a a stat. I don't know what it is, but it's really small. Like I don't want to like quote it right now, but it's really small compared to like um, you know the representation of of other races. Yeah, and I think you know, people just want to be heard and they want someone who they can relate with. And I think that's what I really admire about you is I know like you have put in so much work to work with 
African American children and youth in the community in Philadelphia, and it's just been it's been amazing. And um, you know, it's it's a big problem, and you know, it's nice to see that with small steps and and people like you, we're we're making a lot of progress, and it's just it's going to take time. Um, and you know, one of the things that obviously you did is create a children's book. Um, and we could, we can get into that a little bit. So what, what, like, you know, what inspired you? Did you, I imagine you started writing this around 2020, right? When, what really inspired you to, you know, become a children's book author and, and write this really meaningful book, which is called Mental Health. What's that? So it really came out of nowhere <laughs> in the pandemic. Um, I was doing telehealth. And I found like the children that I were treating, the families weren't really involved, right? right. So they would so kind of like pop, pop the kid the on kid. the screen. I would have an hour with them. And then that would kind of be it till the next week. And what I tell all my clients when we start is therapy really happens outside of that hour we spend together. So it's important that you have like family involvement, supports, and people who understand what your mental health experience is. So um, a, a favorite quote of mine is Toni Morrison's. And it's, um, if there's a book that hasn't been written yet that you want to read, then you must write it. So I figure I got to write it. I got to write the book. Like it's, it's nothing out here, you know, um, bringing families together collectively talking about mental health. So that was like the inspiration that I had for the book. And one thing I love about it is like, just within its pages, you cover so much. And it's not even like, you know, when I read, read through it, I was like, there's like, people of all ages can learn a lot from this. Not, I mean, obviously, like the target audience is children, but I think it's something that everyone should read or like every practice should have just to as like a resource. So what, you know, at you as the author, the creator, what would you want parents and families and children to know, like, about the book, the main the main message and what they can get out of it. So just kind of like you said, it's for all ages. Like my target audience is actually families and children, mm -hmm. right? So the book is not like a book that you would read cover to cover in one sitting. I kind of set it up more like a textbook. So mm -hmm. kind of like we'll go through sections you'll read it with your family and then kind of explore, okay, what do we read? Let's have a conversation about it. So it's really like a conversation piece. I want families to sit down, read a section and then talk about it. Like that was the whole idea of like getting our communities to start talking about mental health. Just start talking about it. Let's just like think about it. It's unheard of in, in communities like um, mine. It's very stigmatized and it's like, mental health what's that that's what the, the main the the, yeah right because it's like a question like what what even is it so um I created it in a way where families can explore like the whole idea of what even is mental health right and then really start talking about their own experience and sharing that and opening it up um you know just a new avenue to wellness yeah, and you know, one thing that I, I loved about the book is that it's not just, you know, there are so many books that are about perhaps mental health conditions, and you you really view, and that is a part of it, but you really view mental health in its entirety. Like, you don't, in order to take care of your mental health, you don't, everyone should be taking care of your mental health, whether or not you've been diagnosed with some you know, depression, anxiety, um, whatever that may be. It's just how we process our feelings and like how we process our emotions. And that's something that, like you mentioned, we really don't talk about. And I just love how you emphasize that this is something for everyone to understand, especially kids and families, like how they're feeling. And it's, it's not something that, you know, even for me, like I didn't grow up talking about that. And it took me until my adult life to really start doing that and it's made a huge difference so um you know what was your thought process behind that making it something that is a book about the entire aspect of just like being human and having emotions and, and having feelings 
Well, the idea was like, I wanted to, I thought about my adolescent self and what I needed at that time. Mm -hmm. And I needed education on what my therapist actually gave me and as an adult was just like the language and the lingo to identify my feelings and what I was feeling. I didn't even know like what I was feeling at that time. As an adult, I couldn't name it, but going to therapy, it helped me get the language that I needed. And that was just feelings exploration. And I wanted to incorporate that into the book because um, it was really something that really helped me open up and it changed the trajectory of my life. So thinking of the adolescents that I treat and my adolescent self, like this is something that they need. They need to learn how to identify their feelings and And what they're feeling. feeling. Like if we can't put a name to it, then we don't know what's going on in our bodies, right? So we can't possibly find a solution for it if we don't even know what's going on. So being able to name an emotion and then, okay, sit with it and understand how that feels. And then the other thing, Joe, is really um emotions get a bad rap like you get strong emotions like anger which people think are negative but no emotion is negative we have stronger emotions than some but all emotions should be felt and expressed and it's okay and you know a lot of times in society these emotions are shunned and this is what really causes people to like you know isolate and not really talk their feelings which are perfectly normal right so we want to normalize all emotions strong emotions the um you know the lesser affecting emotions like happiness joy you know but anger like we can express anger it's it's okay like we get times you know it's kind of like just letting the elephant in the room be out (laughs) okay um So I just wanted to, you know, allow people to explore that families, let's explore our emotions. And the more you can identify and talk about what you're feeling, the more you can communicate and it's left behaviors that come with it, right? So when children are able to identify and express it, it's less behaviors that come with, um, you know, most behaviors happen out of frustration of not being able to communicate what's going on with them. So that was the idea. Yeah. And it's just like understanding that like it's okay to feel whatever that feeling may be is, is super comforting. And, you know, one of the best feelings I've had is that understanding that what you're going through, like nothing is worse than feeling alone, you know, and like realizing that you're not going through something like you yourself are special, but what you're going through is not you know, it's not something that only you experience people. So having that understanding and, you know, getting the big picture perspective of, you know, emotions and feelings and, you know, mental health, it's, it's something that's really helped me. And, you know, it's, I love that, you know, what you're doing is going to help so many kids and it's amazing. And it's, the book is, I really, I hope everybody who watches purchases it and reads it because it's so well done. And like you said, it's for, for all ages. Um, so I just, my hat's off to you. It's, I loved it. It's, you're, you're doing great work. So thank you. Thank you. What, so what was, you know, this was your first time. I, I have a couple authorly questions if, if that's okay. You know, this was your first time writing a book, right? So like, what was that <laughs> process like for you? Was it um you know what you expected anything come up that was like easier than you thought harder than you thought like what was like overall the the process like so I am an author now but I was like not an author at all had no idea what to even do so Google was my best friend (laughs) um I kind of like just Google how to write a book and most of the answers was like just start writing (laughs) so I just started writing a manuscript I had an idea of what I wanted the book to be about and how I wanted structured so I just kind of started in word like really just writing on my laptop and once I had um I googled things like how many pages are children's books like um you know mental health is a heavy topic so 
just the process of trying to not make that overwhelming for children was very difficult for me, like trying to just like, you know, um, uh, kid down (laughs) the and like um so that was a process just trying to like I would write and then be like no that's too serious that's too big for a small child I'm thinking about like children like six to eight like can they understand this word so that was a process for me um just because the topic is so heavy and serious (laughs) um I just kind of started writing and like just Googled my way through. And it was important to me to self-publish. So um, just finding those options, Googling like different companies and pricing. Pricing was a big thing as well. Like, you know, um, so all those things were important to me. And I kind of just went from there. I had no idea how to be an author. (laughs) Well, you know, just getting the story out there is the most important thing. And then I know you could just piece the puzzle together from there. And, you know, I love and I love the illustrations throughout the book. What was, was it, you know, one thing when I work with authors, especially children's book authors, is one thing they are could be a challenge is finding an illustrator, um, you know, because like if I can write, but I can't draw. So what was it like for you to find an illustrator? How did you go about that process? So I had a very specific um idea of what I wanted illustration wise and I kind of used a very common tool that most people use for like household things which was um task rabbit <laughs> and I kind of right. just put children's illustrators and then I interviewed a couple of them and then I found one that had my same idea and kind of like um really uh brought out what I wanted in the book and that's how I found my illustrator and I kind of just like work with her she's really awesome she's from Tennessee her name's Kennedy Kitchen she does awesome work and I was just really excited at like the first um proof that she sent me it was like wow that's that that's it (laughs) you know I want to represent people of color Mm -hmm. as well So that was a big theme throughout the book because being able to see yourself, you're able to envision yourself in different spaces and, um, you know, it opens up your future and in media and, um, you know, books and literature, we should be represented. So that was a big and important um, task for me. So if you see the book, it's very representative of um, people of color. And I'll just show you like a couple pages of my favorite pages. Yeah, let's of, see it. Of the illustrations. So this is like a map of like all the different areas of mental health, which it affects like your brain, your mind, your connections with other people. That was a really cool page. And then we have um, the page about emotions. And we have a girl with vitiligo. And I thought that was so amazing and representative. So um, she's doing like the different emotions faces. That was a really cool page. And then we have this page. I don't know. um, It's just so familiar to me. Like, it's just like a mother and her daughter, but a very urban mother and her daughter. And I thought that was just like, it, it really just represents a whole different community and yeah. which aren't visible in other spaces. So being able to highlight that was important. And then our feelings chart, which is um, super cute. <laughs> I love, I love it. So like she has amazing illustrations and of course the cover, I love the cover. It's just That's like- amazing. Yeah, so that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's amazing, and you know one one thing that you know it was one of the coolest things about being a children's book author is you could connect with kids and you could read them the story. Have you had a chance to you know I follow you on on social, so I've seen some, so I'd like to share. So how have you like gotten out in the community and shared the book, and have you know even done some readings? What have you done to kind of you know get directly in front of kids with the story because that's one of the best things that um, a children's book author can do. 
Yeah, I've had so many opportunities. I've really been blessed with like a lot of opportunities. Not only do I work for like three major companies in Philadelphia who really supported me and got behind the book. So I was able to do a lot of things within my own companies, like um, fairs. And um, I had one one of my companies ordered like a hundred books and we just gave them out to the community. So that was really cool. Um, I got to do, so July is BIPOC Mental Health Awareness Month, which BIPOC is an acronym for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. So last year I partnered with Howard University and the APA, um, American Psychological Association, and I did, um, a reading and book giveaway at their fair, which was really cool. Um, I've been at the Please Touch Museum in Philadelphia where I did last year. It was like a get ready um, for school type of event. And it's like free every Sunday and they highlighted a different topic. So they did a mental health topic. So I was at the Please Touch Museum. I also was awarded a uh, a grant from the city of Philadelphia last summer to do my own mental health program. So I did an eight week workshop course in inner city Philadelphia in the Mantua section. And I kind of like just really created my own space. It's nothing like it and like ever heard of. So I taught kids about trauma, mindfulness, we did feelings exploration, like we really broke down the whole book and I had, um, you know, activities and everything. So that was really cool. It went on for eight weeks last summer. I had about 20 to 25 kids. That's that was, awesome. so um, I've just had so many opportunities. Like the book is going to be in a library soon. So I'm awesome. excited. It. And, um, in Philadelphia? Not in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is very hard to get into. Oh, really? <laughs> but on the out in um the community where I'm living now. So it'll be in my public library. But I'm still working on Philadelphia and the school district <laughs> because I think it's a resource that, you know, our schools need. Yeah. Uh, when you work with kids, are they are they like excited to like what is their, you know, response to to it and their messaging in and the messaging? Are they open to it and excited about it or interested? The children are very curious, right? So they start out like, okay, what is this? <laughs> you know, um, but I think the way in which I present it and even like throughout my workshops, like just introducing, like I had a model brain and it was all colorful and they could take it apart and hold it. And I'm like, this is the part you think with and this is where you feel your emotions. So the way that I present it, they're really interested. And you know, mental health can be interesting. So mindfulness, we did a, a whole session of just like um, singing bowls and I let them use the singing bowls and we practice um, meditation. So kids are very curious and very interested in those things. And I was really surprised. I'm like, my mindfulness class, I didn't really know how it would go. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. sitting oh, and concentrating is like really hard for younger kids but they were so in tune and if you look at my insta like you'll see like clips of them like meditating and using the singing bowls and it was just really a great experience that I could bring to the inner city and like the kids just loved it amazing what what for you like throughout all of this has been it doesn't have to be just one thing but like you know, one or a couple of the most fulfilling parts of like this whole journey, taking on like working in your a field that you're passionate about, writing a book, help connecting with children. Like, you know, what is it? What is what are the big things for you that have been really meaningful? The most meaningful is that I'm able to educate my community on mental health, something that's so needed, something that I needed when I was a child, like just being able to see myself over and over again get exposed to you know opening up people's worlds just like that therapist did for me like seeing children just um, be able to survive mentally physically and be well is like the most rewarding part for me 
no, I, I can imagine. And it's, it's really just amazing work. And, you know, where do you, where do you go from here? Are you have maybe another book? Are you working on any projects? What's the, what do you have to share for what the future holds? So I am working on a workbook that awesome. goes along the book, which is going to be, um, very comprehensive. So we have coloring pages from the book. It has some journal space in the back. And, and then we have some worksheets that will like really hone in on the skills that um, the book teaches. So that's coming soon. <laughs> um, look forward for that. Awesome. And, you know, I, I, uh, I don't really have many other questions for you. My last thing is just to share like where could, you know, readers find you on social um you know where just to to stay in contact with you and your work um you know share anything you'd like and of course when I do the actual interview on the blog I'll plug it all via like text as well so just share where they could find you as well okay so I'm on Instagram and Facebook and my handle is mental health let's explore it's all one word it's super long but just mental health let's explore is the same handle for Instagram and Facebook um, you can catch me on there um, and then there's a link tree on both pages which just connects you to like all things mental health um, our crisis numbers uh, the crisis text line for children you know our adolescents love to text so you can text a counselor and you know get immediate crisis intervention so all those links are on my link tree um, and other resources as well awesome well Marcel it's been amazing to, to talk to you learn about your work learn about your book I really admire it and I appreciate you you coming here and speaking with me and um, I hope everyone purchases your book and stays up with stays up with your work. So thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.